at that point, you get dropped by the Heat. Mm -hmm. But you had another season on your contract, so they had to pay you out. They bought me two and a half million. Yeah. So you know, I mean, it's not the ideal situation, but two and a half million is still two and a half million. You end up playing nine times for the Heat. Mm. Nine games. Yep. Okay, so then the Clippers picked you up. Yep. But then they dropped you? No, so they they picked me up for the rest of the season, but they didn't make the playoffs. Ah, okay, got it. Yeah. Got it. They gave me an opportunity to see, you know, if I... I was out of shape at that point. The, the, The investigation took, you know, eight months, I think, or six months. I went... It went from... September and November all the way to March. And by this time, you know, I had not been practicing with the Miami Heat. I was coming off a broken foot, so I was already out of shape. So when I ended when I ended up in LA, I wasn't in no way, shape, or form Smush Parker the Gazelle. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh that was the last of my like I was at that point of jumping all the ho- through all the hula hoops that I had to had to get to the NBA and stay there, I was done, and I decided to t- uh, you know travel the world to play overseas. Well, didn't you also sign to the Denver Nuggets? Uh, I think I tried out for their. Uh, I, I think I got invited to their vet camp or whatever. I, I I do I do remember playing for them for a little bit. Yeah, I, th- I think it was a preseason. I'm not sure. Right. It was a preseason, but you know that didn't work out either. And, Right, so so those games for the Clippers were your final games yeah. in the NBA. Yeah, but you didn't realize it at the time, or did you? Uh, probably not. Not at the time, no. Not at the time, no. But the, the fire and the passion to play at that level was starting to dim. Okay, and then you really started playing all over the world. Yes, sir. So you played for China for the yes. Guangdong Southern Tigers. Tigers. Yep. You played in Russia yeah. for the Spartak St. Petersburg. Yes. When you hear about what happened with uh, Brittany Griner mm. in Russia yep. and how so many WNBA players as well as former NBA players go yeah. over there to just try to make ends meet. Yeah. And then with her, the worst possible situation ends up happening. Mm-hmm. As someone who used to play in Russia, were you surprised? No. That's something how they like, do it over there? Something, something like that can happen at any point uh, to any American basketball player, athlete who's out, out there just by themselves. Mm. I felt, uh, you know, there were times where I felt unsafe. How so? No, being in a country uh, where, you no, know, the, the native tongue isn't English and no one speaks it. Uh, being I'm Russian, in a, so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was born in Ukraine, but at the time it was the USSR. So okay, nice. Okay. I'm very familiar with the whole Russian. <laughs> uh, but Russian no, system. again, I, I, like you, you name Greece, you know what I mean? You name yeah, China. You, yeah, you, you name China Greece, and Russia. You went back to Greece again. But I played in Greece. I played in uh, Venezuela. I played in the Dominican Republic. I played in Mongolia. I played in Lebanon. And in Lebanon, that, the true story, Lebanon, I'm playing on a, in, a, in a town where half the city is blown to pieces. The, my hotel room had bullet holes in the wall. Damn. So you get they just got over a war, a war, or they never really recovered from a war. Yeah. So this is what I was walking past every day, seeing half like buildings ex- uh, being blown up. I played in uh, Mongolia, in Tunisia. We had a, a curfew because there was a war going on in a town right next to mine. I, you know, we had an eight o'clock curfew. There was bombs going off. So. I mean, there were times where I felt like, yeah, I might not make it home. Yeah. But playing in these foreign countries, you were like Kobe Bryant over there. Yeah. You were the superstar. Mm-hmm. You know, and Brittany Griner, she was like essentially the, the most famous, she was the Michael Jordan of yeah. Russia at the time. Mm-hmm. She was super popular. So players that do reasonably well in the U.S. when they go overseas, they're yeah. superstars. Yep. You, know, you saw Stefan yep. you know, Marbury, which he, he's got statues of him in China mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I mean, did you feel kind of satisfied with that type of, you know, admiration? Or was it like, because it's not America, it's not quite the same? I was never chasing admiration. I just loved it. Playing, I loved playing the game of basketball, and that's what it was about for me. Uh, I didn't learn, and we we were just talking about this last night with my family, that basketball is a business. 
basketball is now a business. And I didn't learn that until I was 36 years old. But I was in the game from 21 to, you know, 34. So while I was in it, I didn't know that it was a business. I believed that basketball was a sport and that it was fun. And I was good at it. I was good at the sport of basketball. I was good at it. Well, you were better than good. You were great. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, to just be in the NBA, you don't uh, get there by being good. Uh, you're I, great. Well, you're, I mean, what percentage of people who play in high school or even college make it to the NBA, like 0.0001%. Yeah. Look at it worldwide, because mm. now the NBA is a worldwide yeah. organization. Yeah. So that percentage goes- 0.0000001% actually make it. So you were great. I don't want you to well, just say you were good. I you appreciate good. that. I no, appreciate I mean, that. that but, that's just the facts. It's but, not my opinion. So I was never in, I never played the game of basketball for admiration. I played because it was fun. And then while it was fun, I was like, oh, I'm good at it. Oh, I can make money from it. I can feed my family from it. Oh, I could play in the NBA, the highest level of basketball. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me do that. And that's what I was, I never uh, approached it like, oh, uh, it's a business. Oh, I need to go to this school or sign with this agent or attach myself to this person or get this kind of deal. Or uh, I, d I never looked at it from that standpoint. I just wanted to play basketball. So when I went overseas, it was about playing basketball. It wasn't about being treated like a Kobe Bryant or a Michael Jordan, even though if that's what, you know, any American that they bring out there or foreign player that they bring across seas, they, they, that's who they want. They want a Michael Jordan. They want a Kobe Bryant. Yeah. So that's what, that's how they treated me. Well, uh, in 2012, uh, Kobe was asked about you. And mm. he made another comment. Yep. He said, uh, I gave him 30 minutes of fame. Uh, is he playing in China right now? You know, maybe one day he'll make it back to the NBA. Mm -hmm. And people kind of got on him for that statement. And he actually put up a Facebook post where he essentially addressed that. You know what I'm talking about? No. Okay. So the Facebook post said this. He said, leadership is, is responsibility. There comes a point when one must make a decision. Are you willing to do what it takes to push the right buttons to elevate those around you? If the answer is yes, are you willing to push the right buttons even if it means being perceived as the villain? Here's where the true responsibility of being a leader lies. Sometimes you must prioritize the success of the team ahead of how your own image is perceived. The ability to elevate those around you is more than simply sharing the ball or making teammates feel a certain level of comfort. It's pushing them to find their inner beast, even if they end up presenting you for it at the time. I'd rather be perceived as a winner than a good teammate. I wish they both went hand in hand, all the time, but that's just not reality. I have nothing in common with lazy people who blame others for their lack of success. Great things come from hard work and perseverance. No excuses. This is my way. It might not be the might not be right for you, but all I can sit but all I could do is share my thoughts. It's on you to figure out which leadership style suits you best. It's a great quote. So he basically says, I don't mind being the bad guy yeah. as long as I win. Yeah. And I don't mind being a bad teammate. As long as I win, yeah, that's and you and don't that, have to like it as long as I win. As, lo as long as and he and he won, and so he won. no one, so no <laughs> one gives him uh, ish because he was a winner. You can't take you can't take that away from him. The man won what five championships? Yeah, won many accolades, and he's he's on the Mount Rushmore of the basketball's greatest basketball players. 100%. You can't take that away, hundred percent. But like like he said, he said it himself. He'd rather be perceived as a winner than be liked. Yeah, or be a good teammate. Or be a good teammate. And me saying that I didn't like him or he was a bad teammate is just going al along with what he said. Yeah, he's co-signing your okay. statement, basically. Oh, yeah. But at one point, you actually try to reach out to Kobe yeah. to make things right. Yeah. And you had a pastor yeah. who was a huge Kobe fan. Mm -hmm. So what did you do next? Uh, uh, God, God has a sense of humor. So uh, <laughs> I say that because... Um, I joined a church back in 2014. Uh, at the at the at that point, it was called the Rock Brooklyn. It is now called the Reflections uh, Brooklyn. And uh, um, the pastor, my pastor, he he is still my pastor. is a huge Kobe fan, just like my, just like my best friend, <laughs> huge Kobe fan. That's that's why I say God has a sense of humor. Um, huge Kobe fan. So, you know, one day, you know, for, for Christmas, I want to do something special for him. So I reached out to Kobe and, uh, you know, I wrote him a letter, you know, asking him to, you know, sign a basketball 
for uh, my pastor and, and an autographed picture. But in that letter, I wrote to him and I said, you know, I apologize for my actions. You know, at this time I'm older and I'm little, I think I'm a bit, a bit wiser. Uh, I told him that, you know, uh, I apologize for my words, apologize for my actions. And, uh, you know, I just asked him if he could sign, if he could do this for my pastor. Well, and, you also said uh, a young mind, young thoughts, young words. That's what I said. That's what you said. Yeah. Right. So, and, uh, you know, I, I never heard back from him, but he did sign the basketball and he did sign a picture. So I was able to present that to my pastor for Christmas. Right. He could have just ignored it. Yeah, he could have. So yeah. he responded in what? He just sent you a package with those things in it? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't have to do that at all. He did. At all. At all. He could have taken that letter and thrown it in his fireplace and got in his helicopter. And, you're right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. He didn't owe you anything. You guys he hadn't did. been in contact. Not at all. At any level. I mean, at this point for, what, like five years? Longer? Longer than that. Longer than that. Seven, seven eight years? Yeah, yeah. Because my last, my last years in the NBA was 2007, 2008. Yeah. 2008. Yeah, you're right. So and seven, by this seven, time, seven, eight years, yeah. yeah. So that was kind of a, I don't know, an olive branch in a way. I'm I sure. Be, I believe it was. Think about how many people ask Kobe for an autographed basketball or a signed picture that he just ignores. I'm sure he, I'm sure he, he gets a yes a lot. Sure yeah. it's, especially yeah. if it's not right then and there. Yeah, the fact exactly. That he has to actually go and get a ball, sign it, go and get a picture, sign it. I, that's how, I, no, I think I sent him the basketball Oh, picture. you sent it to him? Yeah. Okay, well, the fact that he has to yeah. sign it, yeah. put yeah. it back in a yeah. box, mm -hmm. mail it back, mm -hmm. all for someone that he doesn't even talk to. Yeah. No, you gotta, I, you no, have to I kind of hand it to him. No, right? I appreciate the gesture. You know, yeah. I, he, like, I, I really felt that that was genuine. Like, he was, that we might, that was our piece right there. That's yeah. how I felt. I, he, I didn't need the letter. I didn't need his words, I, but his actions were he signed a basketball, he signed a picture. I'm like, oh, yeah. thank you. I was able to do something special for my pastor. I'm sure thank your pastor you, Kobe. Loved for, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's still sure in his office. It it's still in know. his office now. There you go. 